Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to start things out with benchmarks of the RTX 2060. Now, there are two things we can actually take away from this story. The first of which is actually the name. Notice it is RTX 2060, not GTX 2060. If you're unfamiliar with the rumors, NVIDIA were thought to be not utilizing the RTX naming convention when it came to the mid to lower end Turing parts. The reason was because ray tracing would likely not be possible on the mid to low range, uh, lower range cards because obviously of the performance. But we do indeed see the RTX name here. So what gives? Well, I have a couple of theories. The first is that NVIDIA probably wants to remain consistent in their naming for the 20 series GPUs. That is, well, very likely. But there is another reason. A lot of folks associate RTX purely with ray tracing. It's become like RTX equals ray tracing. And that's not actually true. RTX is the myriad of technologies that uh, you can employ on the GeForce 20 lineup. And this includes, but certainly not limited to, DLSS. Now, if you think back to the GTX 1060, the six gigabyte model, it was certainly capable of running 1080p with all of the settings at the highest, but also pretty capable of 1440p with a lot of titles. Sure, you wouldn't be maintaining a rock solid 60 if you'd cranked up all the settings on all games, but it did a fairly reasonable job. If you've not seen, we did put out a video recently running the Final Fantasy 15 benchmark with DLSS. I'll try to remember to link that in the video description. And we did that with not only an RTX 2080 Ti, but also an RTX 2070. The basic uh, gist of where I'm going with this is that I wouldn't be surprised if NVIDIA are going to be leveraging the LSS on the uh, 2060 series of cards. And with that in mind, you could probably expect the GPU to be able to put out 1440p on pretty much all titles rather comfortably, assuming, of course, we see that optimized. There's a little more I want to discuss on the RT course in just a moment, but I don't want to kind of veer too much off topic, so let's get into the performance itself. So according to the Final Fantasy 15 benchmark, the performance is very similar in line with what we saw between the GTX 1060 and 1080. So it is roughly half the performance of the RTX 2080. The RTX 2080, the vanilla cards score around the 4900 mark with uh, 4K at the high settings, whereas this score is 2589. I would be extremely interested to see how well it would perform, assuming the LSS is indeed uh, possible with this GPU. I'd be very interested to see what type of score you could get with this GPU. Either way, it's looking like it's essentially putting out similar types of performance to the GTX 1070, slightly below, but not by much. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's a few optimizations and clock speeds maybe are cranked up a little more if we could in indeed see similar performance to last generation's GTX 1070, which would be, at least in my opinion, pretty darn impressive. Oh, and I'd like to quickly add that this is also an article, so if you prefer to check that out, you can find it, of course, linked in the video description. And I also did say that I had a little more news concerning the RT cores. The folks over at Fudzilla claim to have some sources from within NVIDIA or somewhere or another that want to remind us or want to point out that the RT cores are capable of much more than just ray tracing calculations. So for those who are not quite familiar with the Turing architecture, I'm going to give you a quick synopsis here. So of course you have the CUDA cores. The CUDA cores have been part of NVIDIA's architecture in some form or another since like the GeForce 8000 series. Keeping things simple for a moment, Turing's GPUs are comprised of multiple SMs. Each SM contains 64 CUDA cores, one ray tracing core, along with eight tensor cores, and a whole bunch of those will come together to form a larger GPU, whether that's the RTX 2070, 2080, and so on. So, from what the uh, insider is whispering here, 
The ray tracing cores are capable of doing much more than just ray tracing. And indeed, there were some reports quite early, just before the GPUs uh, launched. I'll try to remember to link the article that I wrote about this in the video description. But basically, that the ray tracing cores were also capable of calculating things such as sound and the echoes of sound in games, which you might say, well, why is that important? Well, imagine that you were using like a virtual reality headset. This could be really cool. And it basically means that yes, of course, we can use uh, ray tracing technology or the RT cores, excuse me, for, well, you know, more realistic lighting, but it also can do so much more besides. And I suspect this is one of the reasons that Nvidia are pushing this to other uh, SKUs in the GeForce lineup, because yes, of course, ray tracing is gonna be cool when it becomes cheaper. And for example, Dyson, and NVIDIA have said that they are currently optimizing the ray tracing in Battlefield 5. I'll remain somewhat skeptical until we see final performance results of that. Uh, I was actually going to cover that in depth, but honestly, I've got so many reviews not, right now, I just can't get to it. So I'll wait until they do some optimizations and I'll investigate it. However, uh, quite frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if optimizations do help performance. It, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say it definitely will. I will, you know, hold out, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did increase performance quite considerably because at the moment it is still an early implementation. But it will also do so much more. Now, how well this really evolves and what happens in the broader ecosystem, particularly because AMD are going to be very competitive, I suspect, with Navi next year, if they can enter the market at a decent price, well, you and I can only guess. It's going to be fascinating, though, and I, for one, look forward to seeing how... Uh, gamers uh, and of course software studios really start to embrace this technology so it will be really cool regardless. Now do you want some more ROM information? Do you want some more Zen 2 information? Well I've got good news for you because it has arrived thanks to some leaks on Sysoft Sandra and a super micro server. So what we have here is an engineering sample. So yes, we have clock speeds, which by the way are showing us 1.4 gigahertz for the base clock, turboing up to two gigahertz, which is quite similar to what the leak we saw earlier, but it also gives us some other insights. Now I'm gonna point out right now, and you know, you'll have to forgive me for repeating this ad nauseum, but it is engineering samples. There's two reasons that that's important. One, the clock speeds are most likely not indicative of final retail silicon. The second is it is because it's an uh, engineering sample. Uh, Sister Sandra may be reporting some of this information incorrectly. So all we can do is make an assumption based upon that. However, uh, there is something I'd like you to uh, take a peek at on that regard, uh, and that is in regards to the level three cache situation. Um, so I'm going to quickly read out the rest of it just so that we're all on the same page. I'm going to ignore the performance numbers. Uh, we'll get into them in just a moment, but just for now, I'm going to put them on hold. So it has, of course, 128 threads thanks to 64 cores. That part we knew. The base clock is 1.4 gigahertz. It appears it turbos up to um, up to two gigahertz, which is once again what we kind of knew. Uh, it has 64 times 512 kilobytes of level two cache. In other words, each core has 512 kilobytes of level two cache, which appears to be identical to previous architectures, which is shiny and good. However, the thing that really caught my eye is that it is t telling us that we have 16 times 16 megabytes of level three cache. And that's kind of important for a couple of reasons. This may hint that they are actually uh, sticking to four times four CCXs on the design of the processor. There is another possibility as well, and that is that the level three cache is being split in half between two sets of cores on a single CCX. Um, so uh, there is the other obvious reason that it could be registering this as well, uh, which goes back to what I just said a moment ago. Unfortunately, this is not a retail sample CPU. And furthermore, because this soft Sandra is not probably updated to take this information uh, into, <laughs> into full account, it is possible it is reading this information incorrectly. And I'm just speculating here. I'm just giving an example. I'm not saying this is a rumor. I just want to make that clear. But it is possible that it could be completely and utterly misreading the configuration of the cache. So for all we know, 
it could just be like, oh, 512 kilobytes of level two cache because that's just how it kind of reads the Zen architecture. But in reality, AMD might have like, you know, five gigabytes of level two cache per core. Obviously, I'm being completely preposterous here and silly just to make a point. However, you kind of get where I'm going with this. We're not 100% certain that this is a thing, but it does lead us to a lot of speculation on what the actual architecture could be. Regardless of the architecture, though, the, the fundamentals, in my opinion, the CPU does have good fundamentals, and it's going to be fascinating exactly what AMD are going to be doing, not just in terms of the performance and the pricing, but also their strategy as a whole, uh, which is not necessarily like the core count for the mainstream, because we all know that there's a possibility they may increase it or they may keep it the same. And regardless of what your thoughts are on that, to me, it's going to be more fascinating of like if they outpace Intel in terms of raw performance. Let's say the core counts, just to make it simple in this, let's just say it's the same, but let's just for the sake of this video say that they're 10% faster than Intel. Are they going to keep at the same price as what they have? Because, you know, in theory at least, the ball's in their court, they could do a lot of stuff uh, regarding the pricing. And I wouldn't be surprised if AMD tried to keep the price as low as possible because they just want to get the mind share right now. And the mind share, honestly, is probably more important than anything when you're the up and comer in a competition because mindshare essentially means that you know you might be someone who has buying power in a company but if you trust uh, AMD processors in let's say your Threadripper uh, rig or your Ryzen rig at home or even your notebook you're like you know what I've not had any problems the drivers have been stable and so on I'm going to definitely give them a shot so this is really important and to me anyway and this is slightly off topic but I do suspect Intel are probably going to have a hell of a time maintaining market share. I think it's going to slip away, but, and I know I keep saying this, Intel are Intel. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. The normal stuff, if you have enjoyed it, well, you know what to do. You can click the like button because YouTube and the interactivity that you provide helps promote the video and that means that you help out the channel a lot. You can also subscribe if you want more of me for some reason or another, if you're a glutton for punishment. And you can also find us on uh, social media, which of course is linked in the video description below. We're also on Patreon if uh, you feel like supporting us. Of course, we understand if you don't, do understand that, well, just watching us is, well, pretty damn amazing to me, anyway. And you can also find a couple of Amazon affiliate links. So once again, if you feel like doing some food shopping today and you want to use those links, it gives us a few pennies, which of course helps support the channel. So if you don't want to support us directly on Patreon, which once again, I understand, you can use the Amazon link just for your normal day-to-day -day shopping and it does help us out by giving us a few pennies. With all of that said, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.